So, deuterium. What's it all about? Why is it something that can show how, well, how this carnivore diet's working? I've often been accused of being anti-science, uh, mostly, obviously, by vegans. Um, they seem to be relying on the old studies, all the, all the old dietary stuff, and, and, you know, science moves on. And I, I am very impressed by science. I've looked at all the old studies as well. Well, you know, I haven't looked at them personally, but I've looked at quite a few. Not all of them, but they don't seem to hold up, and a lot of the brightest people are saying they don't. So, is there any scientific evidence for this carnivore diet? Well, yes, there is, but you've got to look a little bit deeper. Now, what impresses me about the whole business of deuterium is that it's not just raw science. It ties in with all my experiences when I was healing up, the thousands of things I tried. The few things that really worked seemed to fall into this area of depleting deuterium. I was doing it without knowing back then. Secondly, the amount of, um, of, of, of amazing results that the scientists and doctors are having in chronic disease who are using these de deuterium depleting protocols. That is very impressive and if you look at it it's really undeniable and it's much better than any of the other um, <coughs> modalities. Whether people are knowing it or not, like, the, um, like Paleo Medicina in Hungary who are using a very high fat diet to reverse disease, they're also depleting deuterium there. But if you look at doctors like uh, Jack Cruz, um, Laszlo Borosh, um, Q Collins, uh, Gabor Somlai, if, if, if you look at these people, I'll put a load of links down below, so please have a look at them. And you'll see that the results are spectacular. <clears throat> okay, thirdly, what impresses me is that it ties in with nature. If science doesn't tie in with nature, it's a bit empty, as far as I'm concerned. If, if, if something is explaining something that doesn't happen in nature, it's a, it's a little bit baseless, really, because nature's always known best. Science should move on and just try and explain what nature's already doing, not try and make up strange rules like we all need to be juicing. Anyway, so quickly, what is deuterium? I'm no scientist, as I've said, but I'm starting to understand it. Deuterium is uh, a, an extra isotope on hydrogen, so this creates heavy water. So think about health, as all the main scientists are these days, as down to mitochondrial functioning, how well the, the engines in the cells are spinning, how well they're producing ATP. If they're not doing this, you're not going to get any clearing of, of, of the cells. You're not going to get any uh, autophagy, apoptosis. You're not going to get better because things are run at a cellular level. Looking at it at a more gross level than that is, is really not getting to the root of the problem. So basically, if the cells get full of deuterium, it's like an engine that's got very thick, gloopy oil in. <coughs> it's not going to work. It's going to, um, it's going to seize up on you. And, you know, the way to sort this out is to put thinner oil in, dilute it, and then the engine will work much more smoothly. This is exactly how it is in the cell. If it's clogged up with deuterium, it's not going to work. And deuterium is really useful for growth. So kids, that's fine. In the womb, that's great. For fruit, that's great, you know. But as we get older, growth equals obesity or chronic disease. You know, we grow some cancers, we grow this, we grow that. So we need to be depleting deuterium. What are the foods that deplete deuterium? They are animal foods, yay. These are very low in deuterium, 120 parts per million or lower animal fats, that kind of thing. That's, that's where we should be eating, 120 parts per million or lower. Um, get the body up to 140 parts per million. You can get testing to find that, but uh, does it, do, do you actually need to? Yeah, maybe not. But uh, if it gets beyond that, then chronic disease becomes very common. So animal foods, animal fats, high fat, very low carbohydrate. The foods that are causing it are the processed foods, the carby foods, fruit. This is not, um, this is not a health food. This is where the detoxes come in. They use it. I, I noticed when I was healing up, if I was doing loads of juicing, especially if it had fruit in it, 
um, I would have a load of inflammation. I thought, oh, it's just, it's just the detoxing process. It's just, this is a real misnomer. Our body can heal anything. All the healing systems are there. They're all in place already. All you need to do is to let the mitochondria s spin freely, the engines in the, in the cells are spin freely and be able to create health. We are always second guessing it. The medical system misses out on it, knocking out symptoms. Um, but really we need to get to the root of everything. Now, could it be really that simple that there's one process, deplete deuterium in the body and everything comes into line? Maybe there is. I mean, the, the detoxing thing with the, with the juicing, it, it doesn't really happen. It, fruit is high in deuterium. If you think of it, you're really loading your body up with deuterium all the time. You might get some sort of initial results, particularly if you go off on a Thailand juice retreat and you're in the sun, but it might, it might not even be the fruit. So I know that you don't want to let go of the old dogma. Speaking to vegans here now, really, neither did I. All of that study I did, is it possible that there's one thing that can get rid of everything. All the old tea, all the old studies you've done, all, all, all the old things about juicing and alkaline and pH and uh, you know all that kind of thing with diets. Don't be acidic. Your body type diet, the uh, saturated fat nonsense that comes up, the, the ketones. So it's all about ketones. You know all of this stuff. Could it all be knocked away? by just depleting deuterium? Is this all we need? Can we throw all the rest of our supplements in the bin? Supplements also contain deuterium. So how about we throw those in the bin? So I was wondering, and I put up a tweet the other day, and I said, could this be why, um, could this be why the carnivore diet is so effective? I was really happy to see uh, Dr. Laszlo Boris come on and, and reply to that and say, yes, this is why. You know, if you're using high fat diets, the fat is very, is very low in deuterium, but also the fat is the fuel that our body needs to create deuterium depleted water in the cells. So you're creating your own cells, uh, your own water in the cells, your own de uh, deuterium depleted water. So this is great. This is how you hydrate yourself. You find you'll drink a lot less on a carnivore diet. Um, there's this old thing about camels don't age. You know, you can't tell the difference between a seven-year-old camel and a 30-year-old camel or whatever, they just drop dead. And that's because they hydrate themselves using saturated fat. This is what's in their humps. So they're producing a lot of deuterium-depleted water and the aging and disease process doesn't really seem to happen. So this is where the detox thing, I don't think, holds any ground at all. It, it doesn't work like that. You can have as many enemas, you can stick as many weird substances up your ass as you like, and, and, and you know, it's, it's probably just unbalancing the microbiome. It doesn't, it doesn't really work like that. The great results that are happening, are sometimes even on an ordinary diet, when they're giving people very low parts per million deuterium depleted water, if you do all the other things that deplete deuterium, and what are those things? I'll come to those in a minute. But if you do all those, you 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 know you might not you, you might not need the deuterium depleted water. If you have pancreatic cancer or something, then great, go to Dr. Laszlo Boris, go to Dr. Q. Collins, go go to one of the others, the experts, and find a program where you can sort of step down that 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 deuterium in the body. But um, you know the 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 other th the other things that um, that deplete deuterium, you've got light, you know, getting rid of artificial light, all of these mitochondrial disruptors, Wi-Fi, you know, getting rid of artificial light at night, turning your Wi-Fi off, or hardwiring your, your router, um, getting out in the sun, getting grounded, meditating, um, proper exercise, proper breathing. You know, if, if you do this, then you avoid the high deuterium environment that we live in these days. Because since our ancestral times, the whole environment is higher in deuterium. This is why probably we can't stay healthy on the diets that our grandparents did. So people say, oh, my grandparents were healthy on all this bread and stuff. We probably can't do that now. Plus, if you think that when a, when a, a field full of crops is, is, is um, just irrigated by rainwater, this is lower in deuterium since it's been irrigated a lot by, by lake water, that kind of thing. 
it's going to be higher in deuterium anyway. Is this the reason why people are more allergic to wheat than they used to be? One of the many reasons, you know, the, the glyphosates and everything as well, of course. So then you get the argument, well, a load of people live to great ages on uh, vegetarian diets. Yeah, well, maybe some do, you know, this vegan cardiologist or whatever. And what about the blue zones where they ate loads of vegetables and they lived to a really long time? Well, yeah, but a lot of those blue zone diets, as we've seen before, they've been, um, they've been misrepresented. You know, the Okinawans ate a load of fish and pork. What, what if it was the fat in the pork that actually kept them? kept them going till right into old age rather than rather than the veggies it could well have been or more likely their whole environment was very deuterium depleted this is how it ties in so beautifully you know when you have the high deuterium foods like fruit they grow in the southern hemisphere or in the summer in the sort of um, you know temperate climates and if you eat them then at that time and you're already healthy and don't have too high too much levels of deuterium in your body it's going to be fine and some people might have very good redox potential. They can clear out the cells very well, better than other people. So some of them they might be doing everything else right, living in a low deuterium environment. So they can get away with these vegetables. But is it worth a Russian roulette? Just because one vegan cardiologist has lived till 98 or whatever, is that really worth? When you understand deuterium, is that worth gambling your life on? Uh, I, I really don't think so. So there we go. I would really, really... Um, encourage you to look into deuterium. It opens up so many aha moments of why something might have been doing you good and something might not have been doing you good. It ties everything in. Nature, healing, everything. So I'm going to put a load of links up below to some great talks about it that you can listen to. Uh, Luke Story's Lifestylers podcast. He's just done a couple. One one with uh, Dr. Q and um, and and Dr. Barosh. But anyway, there's two of them down there that are really great to listen to. Um, if you can listen to some of Laszlo's talks on, on YouTube, particularly his Vermont 2018 talk, it's fantastic, very informative. Um, if you can afford it, go and get into Jack Cruz's Patreon, his series on deuterium, which, which goes way into the science if you really want to see what's going on. But anyway, there you go. What if health was all about avoiding high deuterium foods and, and avoiding artificial light, getting in the sun, doing what you should be doing and eating what you should be eating and what nature provides at your latitude. Nature always knew best. Look at the science that's tying in with nature and you'll probably find that all the best doctors and the best scientists are actually picking up on this and coming over onto it. So stop listening to the old vegan dogma. Stop listening to the food pyramid dogma. It's not about eating whole grains. It's not about exercising. It's not about avoiding meat because it's carcinogenic. It's all nonsense. Look at some proper science and blow your minds. Deuterium, check it out. Mm -hmm.